Now we are going to study about the norma lateralis. It is formed by a number of bones. The frontal bone, the parietal bone, the occipital bone, the temporal bone, the sphenoid bone, the zygomatic bone, the maxillary bone, nasal bone and inferiorly the mandible which is not present here. It has a number of features. First of all, let us discuss the temporal lines. These temporal lines are two lines which give attachment to the temporalis fascia or the temporal fascia. They are present on the lateral part of the skull and they extend onto the norma verticalis as well. These lines start from the zygomatic process of the frontal bone as one. They extend backwards and upwards. In front of the coronal suture, they are divided into two lines, a superior line and an inferior line. The superior temporal line crosses the coronal suture and goes over to the parietal bone. Posteriorly, it disappears. The inferior temporal line also starts in front of the coronal suture, crosses the coronal suture, moves backwards and then it moves downwards and forwards on the parietal bone. As it reaches the temporal bone, it continues with the supramastoid crest of the temporal bone. This mastoid crest divides the squamous part of the temporal bone from the mastoid part and it then continues towards the root of the zygoma or the zygomatic arch. Now let us discuss the zygomatic arch. This zygomatic arch is present on the side of the skull. It is a horizontal bar of bone that is subcutaneous and we can feel it on our cheek. This zygomatic arch is formed in the anterior two-thirds by the temporal process of the zygomatic bone and in its posterior two-thirds by the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Where these two processes meet is the zygomaticotemporal suture. The zygomaticotemporal suture is directed backwards and downwards. This uh, arch houses a space or a gap between the side of the skull and the zygomatic arch. This space is wider anteriorly and narrower posteriorly. The superior border of the arch on its anterior part has a notch which is called the jugal point. This arch posteriorly as it joins the squamous part of the temporal bone is divided into two parts or its roots, the anterior root and the posterior root of the zygomatic arch. These roots where uh, at a, their junction have an uh, um, eminence or a tubercle which is called the articular tubercle. This articular tubercle is present in front of the mandibular fossa. This uh, behind this articular tubercle the posterior root forms the upper part of the mandibular fossa and on its posterior part has another projection. This projection this projection is called posterior or post glenoid tubercle. The temporal lines give attachment to the temporalis fascia and all of this part above the zygomatic arch is the temporal fossa. This temporal fossa gives origin to temporalis muscle. The inferior margin of the zygomatic arch which has this articular tubercle on its posterior side it gives origin to another muscle which is called masseter muscle. Posterior part of the root of the posterior part of the root of the zygoma on its posterior part has an opening which is called the external acoustic meatus. This is the opening for the ear or the tympanic cavity. The external acoustic meatus has its boundaries the anterior superior posterior and inferior boundaries the anterior inferior and lower part of the posterior boundaries are formed by the tympanic plate the posterior superior boundary is formed 
by the mastoid part of the temporal bone. The external acoustic meatus on its posterior superior surface has a triangle. This triangle is called supramatal triangle, which is bound above by the supramastoid crest, in front by the boundary of the external acoustic meatus, and below by a vertical tangent passing through the posterior part of the acoustic meatus. This is the part which forms the lateral boundary of the mastoid antrum. The mastoid part of the temporal bone lies just behind the external acoustic meatus, this part. This part is continuous antro superiorly with the squamous part of the temporal bone separated on the outside by the supramastoid crest. It articulates posterior superiorly with the inferior part of the parietal bone this hole is the parietal bone and it has the suture, parietomastoid suture between them. It articulates posteriorly with the occipital bone and the suture between them is called occipitomastoid suture. The parietomastoid suture and the occipitomastoid sutures meet the lateral part of the lambdoid suture and this part is called asterion. This is the part where in infants uh, there was the fontanelle, the mastoid fontanelle was present. The mastoid process is a breast-like projection which is present on the posterior inferior part of the external acoustic meatus. It appears during the second year of life. The tympano-mastoid fissure is present on its anteroinferior part and the mastoid foramens are present near the occipitomastoid sutures. There is a long projection which is called the styloid process which is a needle-like thin projection situated on the antromedial part, antromedial part of the mastoid process. This is directed anteriorly downwards and slightly medially. Its base is enveloped by the tympanic part of the, uh, the tympanic plate and its apex or its uh, most uh, tip is usually hidden by the mandibular ramus. Now let us talk about the temporal fossa. It is bound above by the superior temporal line. It is bound below by laterally by the zygomatic arch and medially by the infratemporal crest of the greater wing of sphenoid. That is, it has two boundaries below, the zygomatic arch laterally and medially the infratemporal crest of the greater wing of sphenoid. In front, it has three bones that form its anterior boundary, the frontal bone above, the zygomatic bone below and the greater wing of sphenoid medially. All of these bones form its anterior boundary. The floor of this fossa is formed by four bones. The frontal bone, the parietal bone, the temporal bone or the squamous part of the temporal bone and the greater wing of sphenoid. All these bones meet and form an edge-shaped suture. This part where this edge-shaped suture is formed this part is called terion. It is a very important point because of its clinical correlations. This terion is the part where three things pass inside the brain. The anterior division, this is the part of the terion. The anterior division of the middle meningeal artery, the middle meningeal vein and the lateral sulcus of the brain. All of these structures are present here. This terion is the part where on the roadside accidents it is a thin part, it is a dependent part and it can get, uh, it can get damaged on the roadside accidents and it can lead to the rupture of anterior division of the middle meningeal artery leading to the for uh, formation of extradural hemorrhage. Now let us talk about the infratemporal fossa. This zygomatic arch separates the temporal fossa 
from the infratemporal fossa. This infratemporal fossa is bound in front by the posterior surface of the maxilla, medially by the lateral pterygoid plate. Laterally, it will have the ramus of mandible and superiorly, it will have the infratemporal surface of the crater wing of sphenoid. All of this part is the infratemporal surface of the crater wing of sphenoid. This fossa is also going to contain some muscles and um, uh, some muscles and uh, nerves, the lateral medial pterygoid muscles, mandibular nerve and its branches, the maxillary nerve, quarter tympani nerve, and accompanying veins, the posterior superior alveolar artery, etc. Then, if we come towards the attachment of normal lateralis, with the mastoid process on the lateral part, there are three muscles attached. From above back, before backwards, these are sternocleidomastoid, splenius capitus, and longissimus capitus. This styloid process gives attachment to a, an apparatus which is called the styloid apparatus. It contains two ligaments, the stylomandibular ligament and the stylohyoid ligament. And it contains three muscles, the stylohyoid muscle, the styloglossus muscles, and the stylo pharyngeus muscle. That's it.